Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be making an animated data visualization uh, with Kepler. Uh, so I'm making this video because I feel like I do this every few months and I always forget how to. Uh, so it's kind of a note for me uh, and something to help you learn. So if we look here, let's see if I can make that a little bigger. Uh, so I'm using the Chicago data portal to get uh, car crash data. I have two other videos on how to pull that data. Uh, the one using Python I'll post down in the description. But here I have my credentials in an ENV file. I'm just bringing those in. And then uh, this is the data set for the car crashes. I can go ahead and run that. Actually, I probably shouldn't have run that. I do think it takes a moment. Okay, not bad, nine seconds. All right. So if we look here, we have 124,172 rows. And if we go back, I'm filtering just 2024 through today. Right now it's February 15th, uh, 2025. And this over here is because I struggle with soda pie a lot. There's a lot of little gotchas in there, but you just need to set that to an insane high number. Uh, it, it is what it is. So I just work with that. You'll probably see me rant in other videos about that feature of it. Feature. Okay, uh, we can look at the columns here. Uh, you can go to the data portal and read through what all these columns are, but the two of interest to me are going to be a crash date and then longitude and latitude. So I'm going to take that result DF, just take those three columns. And actually I'm going to do this a little different because I was playing around with the date. It didn't like parquet files. So I think though, uh, is that two date time? There we go. And if I just run that, and I can ignore that warning. Okay, so we do have a date time, and I'm just going to write that out, like I said, to a CSV for some reason. I was having issues with the parquet file. Go ahead and run that. And bring this over so we can see. And so there's my crashdates.csv. Okay, so if you just go to kepler.gl, uh, get started and drag and drop your files here. I'm just going to grab that CSV, drag it over. Okay, so can I make this bigger? All right, a few things to do here. Uh, first filter, this is going to give us our animation and we just need to make sure we choose this crash date field uh, and it does show as time. So once you click that, uh, you'll get this slider down here. Uh, this is kind of the rolling window you make that smaller. So it's showing the data in this window as it goes. Uh, you can actually slow that down, which I like to do. Um, let's see, a few things here. They do have uh, AI panel. If you have a chat GPT key, you can put it in there. I haven't really messed around with that. Uh, I like the 3D map here. And if we go, I'm going to change this from point. But if you look through here, you can change the color, uh, the point size, uh, make those bigger or smaller. And just for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and do a heat map. And you can change the style of heat map here. I'll just leave that as default. And blending. Mm. Additives fine. Okay, so now if we go ahead and play that, uh, we're going to see 
what's going on in between those two points here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow that down a little bit. Actually, a lot. I think that's as low as it goes. And uh, you can see there we have what dates it's between. Uh, so that's nice. But we could do a little better. I find it's a little better one if you zoom in. And of course, I live in Chicago, so if I go ahead and play this, uh, I can tell, you know, that's Lakeshore Drive. Uh, here is the Oak Street Curve, which is pretty notorious for crashes. There it is. Uh, so if you see those bright dots, uh, that's a pretty wicked, I think, 20 mile an hour curve that the lanes seem like they're separated by inches. Uh, and it's cool because you can kind of just move around the city. Uh, you could probably find this data for Seattle, New York, uh, any area you're interested in. And I'm going to go ahead, maybe two more things here, speed that up just a little bit. It looks like that intersection there is bad. <laughs> all right, getting back on track. I'm going to move this all the way to the beginning and I am going to uh, change that from moving time window to incremental time window. So what this is going to do is it's not sliding and just showing the data in that window. It's taking the data from the beginning, adding the data points as those dates come in. Um, I just think that's a little more useful maybe. Of course, there's construction, traffic patterns, change a little bit, but I think this will show you uh, where, where a lot of the problem areas are pretty quickly. And if we want to go ahead and uh, save this, look for a screen capture that creates a GIF. I'm on Linux, so I'm very lucky. I can just do a uh, peek. And let's see if I wanted, say, this window here. And make sure I move that back to the beginning here. Okay. And I'm going to record three, two, and just let that run for a little bit. I'm not gonna let that run to the end, even though that'd be a few seconds. Seems a lot longer when I'm sitting here recording. Okay. And I should not have moved my mouse into the window because that'll be on the recording. Uh, stop. And, uh, yeah, that's a different project, but that's okay to save it there. Uh, that was Terraform, Docker, Airflow, GCP, and let me try to clean up my windows a little bit, get rid of peak here, go ahead and pause that, actually I'll minimize it, and move that over. And I just need to remember to delete this because uh, this is a GitHub repo I have. Uh, there we go. I could have renamed that. Uh, but then you have this GIF. Uh, so it can definitely be helpful just kind of doing exploratory analysis. Uh, sometimes a good visualization can give you some insights or spark the imagination of where to look. Uh, the main thing with GIFs for me is their eye-catching. And I, I hate to admit it, being in coding and things like that, uh, but sometimes you need to have a little bit of marketing. Uh, a flowchart, an animated GIF, things like that. You put it on the repo, uh, it grabs people's attention. Uh, shiny things grab people's attention. Uh, yeah, that's big news. Uh, but it can help set you apart. And the more you dig into it, the better you are with visualizations, and that can be a really helpful tool. Um, 
well, just all around, it's a very helpful tool to have. Uh, but that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful, and I'll see you in another one.